off in the number 10 spot is Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Beginning April 20th, 2010, the Gulf of Mexico was hit by the largest marine oil spill in history. This infamous oil spill, sometimes referred to as the Gulf of Mexico oil spill, all began with the Deepwater Horizon oil rig that was essentially a floating platform that was drilling an exploratory well about 18,000 feet deep. However, the disaster struck when the methane gas from the underwater well expanded, blasting through a recently installed concrete core and eventually rising into the drilling rig where it ignited and exploded. The explosion quickly engulfed the drilling platform, taking the lives of 11 workers and forcing the remaining 94 to evacuate. And after just two days, the entire rig had sunk. From that point forward, with every passing moment, oil was seeping into the ocean, causing complete environmental devastation. And although BP, the oil company, had attempted to halt the leak with remote controlled underwater vehicles, the oil continued to flow for another 87 days. It's estimated that about 210 million gallons of oil were leaked from the underwater well, affecting nearly 70,000 square miles of ocean. This disaster not only wreaked environmental havoc, but also resulted in major criminal lawsuits for higher ups in the company. Next up at number 9, Waskran Avalanche. What's scary about earthquakes is not only how much damage they themselves can do depending on the magnitude, but what else they can cause depending on where it happens. And what happens when an earthquake happens near the highest mountain in Peru? Unfortunately, the deadliest landslide in the country's history. On May 31st, 1970, a 7.9 magnitude earthquake emanated from about 35 kilometers from Mount Waskaran, tragically causing a massive landslide along the mountain. It's estimated that the avalanche sped down the mountain at about 160 kilometers an hour, picking up ice, rocks, and even a giant 700 ton boulder, along with other debris, eventually crashing down at the base of the mountain and burying the surrounding towns. The tragic day resulted in taking the lives of roughly 70,000 people and remains one of the worst disasters the country has faced. Coming in at number 8, Szechuan Earthquake. Back in 2008, the mountainous region of Sichuan province in southwestern China faced one of the worst earthquakes in history. Caused by the collision of the Indian, Australian, and Eurasian plates, a huge 7.9 magnitude earthquake erupted, completely destroying roughly 80% of buildings in the affected area. The magnitude was astronomical. Not only did houses, businesses, and schools crumble to the ground, but entire villages and towns were destroyed from the disaster. Plus, if the devastation from that weren't enough, the quake caused multiple landslides, which created about 830 makeshift dams across the region, coincidentally causing widespread flooding, which was then only exacerbated by heavy rainfall. According to the final government assessment, nearly 90,000 people were counted as either dead, missing, or presumed dead. On top of that, an estimated 375,000 were left with serious injuries. But even those who survived the disaster, with or without injury were greatly affected, as millions of citizens were now homeless, without food, and many without family. Coming in at number 7, Mercury Poison. In 1908, the Shiso Corporation opened its doors in Minamata City, Japan. For years they were a fertilizer company, however they eventually expanded to include chemical production, eventually becoming the most advanced in the country both before and after World War II. In 1932, the Shiso factory started a satellite aldehyde production, making 210 tons that year alone. And for over 30 years, between 1932 to 1968, the Shiso Corporation released their wastewater into the bay off Minamata City, not thinking anything of the environmental impact it could have on fisheries or their community. Now I won't get into the chemistry too deep, but essentially a side reaction of creating this compound led to a very small percentage of methyl mercury, and this mercury was dumped into the bay along with the other wastewater water, year after year after year. Over time, it infected the fish in the bay, which were then eaten by the public, and slowly but surely, the citizens of Minamata began contracting severe mercury poisoning. In 1956, the first victim of the disease was discovered, and after that, an epidemic of infection began. After all was said and done, there were roughly 3,000 certified victims of the poisoning, as well as another 10,000 who were compensated after several hefty lawsuits took place. So, although it may 
may not have directly killed the most people, it caused an absolute pandemic, ruining the lives of thousands. Coming in at number 6, Mount Tambora Eruption. Back in the year 1816, the world was faced with an incredibly strange occurrence. There was no summer. Countries all over the world, including tropical ones, were reporting incredibly low temperatures, and places like New York were facing snowstorms and frost in July. While at the time no one quite knew what happened, evidence has since suggested that it all had to do with an erupting volcano the year before. But of course, this was not just any earthquake. The legendary eruption occurred April 10th, 1815 at the Mount Tambora volcano in Indonesia, and remains the most powerful volcanic eruption in human history. According to NASA, 150 cubic kilometers of exploded rock flew into the air and would have been visible from about 1300 kilometers away. But from this giant explosion came so much volcanic ash that it actually reduced the amount of sunlight that could reach the Earth's surface, and from there the temperature in the northern hemisphere dropped 1 degree Fahrenheit. Now, now, one degree might not sound like much, but it was enough to completely overhaul the climate for an entire year. Not only that, but the eruption itself caused roughly 11,000 deaths on site, followed by about 100,000 famine related deaths for the following year due to crop shortages. Coming in at number 5, the Great Galveston Hurricane. Once upon a time, the small island of Galveston, just off the coast of Texas, was the grandest city in the entire state. It had the biggest port, the most wealth, swanky mansions, and even some of the first telephones and electric lights. However, after one fateful storm on September 8, 1900, the small island city would never be the same. The day began like any other, and although they had received limited news about a storm brewing near the Gulf of Mexico, they didn't think too much of it. Then around 11am, they received a report that the storm was getting worse, and the waters were very rough. But still, without the technology we have now, there was no way of knowing what was coming. Finally, around 3pm, two men ran into town from the beach, shouting that the gulf was looking like a 50 foot tall wall, and something bad was headed straight for the island. Shortly after, the storm hit Galveston, the hurricane sweeping in at a whopping 225 kilometers an hour, paired with six foot waves crashing into buildings, sweeping away citizens, animals, and everything in sight. According to those who survived the fateful day, the storm went on for hours, not subsiding until the early hours of the next morning, just in time to see the wreckage in broad daylight. The carnage was insurmountable. Not only were roughly 3,600 houses and 600 businesses reduced to nothing but rubble, leaving thousands of citizens without shelter, but between 6,000 to 8,000 people perished during the disaster as well. Their bodies left mangled in the streets for their loved ones to try and identify. To this day, it remains the worst hurricane in US history. Coming in at number 4, the Indian Ocean Tsunami. Almost 20 years ago, on December 26, 2004, a catastrophic magnitude 9.1 earthquake struck the undersea off the west coast of Sumatra, Indonesia. Now, as far as earthquakes go, that is almost as bad as it gets. In fact, since 1900, this event is considered the third largest earthquake worldwide. From the time the quake began at 8 am in Indonesia, there was only about 15 minutes before the speeding waves hit land, giving residents very little time to flee to higher ground and try and save themselves or their family. The deadly waves then continued for another 7 hours, devastating not only the nearby coastal areas, but even managed to reach as far as East Africa. Waves of up to 100 feet were crashing down, traveling as fast as 800 kilometers an hour and swallowing everything in its path. The final estimated death toll was 230,000. However, another 2 million people in 14 different South Asian countries, as well as some East African countries, were left completely displaced. To date, this tsunami has taken the lives of more people than any other recorded tsunami in history. Coming in at number 3, the Bola Cyclone. On November 12th, 1970, an unexpected and deadly storm struck what was at the time called East Pakistan. 
Pakistan, now known as the region of Bangladesh. The Bolas cyclone formed over the Bay of Bengal from the remnants of Tropical Storm Nora. And Nora had spent two days over the South China Sea before beginning to intensify and move north towards East Pakistan. Before the storm arrived on land, the surrounding areas were inundated with flooding. Then on the day, the cyclone struck India and Bangladesh with wind speeds of around 185 kilometers an hour, absolutely decimating everything in its path. And tragically, either due to the lack of notice from the Indian Weather Service or not enough understanding of the cyclone's intensity, a proper evacuation plan was not put in place and around half a million lives were lost to the disaster. However, as you can imagine, the issues didn't stop there. In the aftermath of the tragedy, there was a lot of back and forth and blame placed for not providing proper preparations, many criticizing the government's slow response to the aftermath. Then later that year, as a kind of revolt against the current government, a new opposition party ended up winning in general elections in East Pakistan, something that was completely ignored by West Pakistan. And ultimately, this led to the Bangladesh Liberation War in 1970 and the creation as an independent nation in 1972. Coming in at number 2, the Yellow River Floods. The second largest river that runs through China is the Huanghe River, or the Yellow River, and there have been three major floods recorded that collectively are considered to be the worst floods in history, as well as some of the most destructive natural disasters ever recorded. The first happened in 1887, when the strategically placed dikes and dams filled with silt gradually raising the water levels near the lowlands. Then and after a heavy rainfall, the river began to overflow and quickly resulted in the death of somewhere between 900,000 and 2 million citizens, as well as causing mass famine and homelessness across the surrounding areas. Then, several years later, in 1931, the river flooded again. This time, about 88,000 square kilometers of land became completely immersed in water, leaving 80 million people without their homes and killing an estimated 4 million. However, although the second is recorded as the worst flood, the most tragic was the last of these floods in 1938. Between 1937 to 1945, China and Japan were at war with each other in what is now referred to as the Sino-Japanese War. I won't get into all the nitty gritty details, but essentially during this time, the Chinese were in a full on resistance against the Japanese who were attempting to advance their influence in the territory. And unlike the first two, the 1938 flood was intentional. Due to the advancements of the invading Japanese troops during the war, Chinese nationalists under the force of their leader Chiang Kai-shek destroyed the productive dams and dikes holding the river at bay, thus causing another catastrophic flood. The 1938 flood killed between 500,000 to 900,000 people, some of whom were soldiers but many of which were their own civilians. Pretty much anyone that did survive was left as a refugee, their farmlands and homes destroyed by the flood and resulted in an overall anger and distrust towards their government that took decades to heal. And last up today in our number one spot, the Bhopal disaster. On December 3rd, 1984, the city of Bhopal, India was overrun by a catastrophic 45 ton gas leak from the Union Carbide insecticide plant. The leak began in the early hours of the morning around midnight or so and was only made worse when the public siren was shut off around 1.30 so as not to alarm the citizens over what, at the time, was believed to be an insignificant leak. To top it off, there was little to no communication between the plant, the Bhopal authorities, and the hospital workers, so no one was properly prepared when things got really bad. A mere hour and a half later, the public siren began wailing, this time for real as it became evident that there was indeed a huge problem. Many were still asleep as it was around 3 in the morning, and so once the deadly gas reached the nearby towns, more than 3,000 citizens died instantly. However, the tragedy did not end there. The death toll continued to rise, climbing up to nearly 20,000 victims, and another 500,000 faced injuries such as respiratory failures and blindness. Even worse is that after the initial incident, the leak was reported not to have been dealt with properly, and so 300 metric tons of waste remained at the site for 
decades, contaminating drinking water and causing widespread chronic health problems, birth defects, and fertility issues for citizens until as recently as 2016. On a good note, as of 2004, the government is required to provide clean water to the residents due to the contamination in the groundwater, and in 2010, seven former employees of the plant were convicted of negligence related to the incident. But nothing will ever change the fact that a gas leak was hidden from the public and killed thousands in their sleep. Oro, Japan. From the outside, this city may seem like any other small riverside village in Japan, but the scariest part of this town is its residents. As you journey through the town, you might see an elderly couple tending to their garden, people shopping at the grocery store, and children attending school. But look closely and you will realize that these people aren't actually people. They are life-size dolls. Only around 20 citizens of the village are actual living, breathing humans, the youngest being over 50 years old. So then, why is there a school full of children? 12 plush scarecrows sit at their desks doing homework while being taught by an equally felted teacher. These tableaus are present throughout the entirety of the village, especially in the abandoned and fading buildings, adding a constant creepy aura to the sleepy little town. It began in 2002 when a resident created a scarecrow of her father, and it has only continued to grow since then. Number 9. Centralia, Pennsylvania Forget Hunger Games The Girl on Fire, Centralia, Pennsylvania is the city on fire. This ghost town in the United States used to have thousands of residents, and had a booming economy and infrastructure thanks to the lengthy coal mines around and underneath the town. In the 60s, however, they discovered they had an issue with illegal dumping and built a massive landfill, and eventually it came time to burn it out. What they didn't realize, however, was that there was a hole connected to the mines at the bottom of the garbage, and the fire quickly spread to the coal mines beneath the town. They didn't realize it until smoke started billowing out of the ground, and they discovered that there was no way to put the fire out. Residents were forced out of the town as the fire was causing people to pass out in their homes, and massive sinkholes were opening up in the ground. Some people fought to stay, however, and the once bustling town now has only about five residents. To this day, the fires are still burning, and the coal underground could allow the town to burn for another 250 years. Number 8. Gomentong Caves in Malaysia this one doesn't come with any horrible tragedy or ghost story, but is instead a terrifying destination for those of us who hate creepy crawlies. When you first enter Gomentong Caves in Malaysia, you'll notice a large amount of excrement on the ground. That's because the caves are home to almost 2 million bats that sleep there during the day. When you get further in, the walls and floors seem to be moving. That's because what's left behind by bats attracts millions of cockroaches into the caves. It's almost impossible to take a step without trampling on a few of the creatures, so it's probably a good idea not to wear your favorite shoes if you plan on taking a tour. It doesn't end there though, as the caves are also home to swarms of giant millipedes. So basically it just sounds like somewhere I have absolutely no interest in visiting. But apparently at around 8pm every night, you can see the bats leaving the cave in what looks like a massive black vortex. So if you're willing to kiss a few cockroaches to be able to see that, well that's your choice. Number 7. Ha Par Villa in Singapore this theme park is one of those places that you just can't believe somebody actually thought, hey, this is a good idea, and went ahead with building it. Hopar Villa in Singapore is an amusement park that is home to mostly creepy and bizarre statues. This place is known as basically the opposite of Disneyland, as it is themed after the underworld, and the main attraction is the Ten Courts of Hell. It was built and intended to teach children about morality, with statues of people being punished for committing certain and crimes. I think it would be enough to just tell the children that if they sin, they'll have to spend the afterlife at this theme park. Statues include things like animals eating people, half human, half crab creatures, and various other gory tableaus. For those who are fans of the creepy and macabre, this may be a top tier destination spot, but for the rest of us, I think I'll just stick with Disney for now. Number 6. The Stanley Hotel in Colorado 
If you're a fan of The Shining, then you're probably already aware of the Stanley Hotel, as this creepy hotel was the basis for the setting of the movie, a visit in 1974 inspiring Stephen King to write the novel. And the pet cemetery on site of the hotel would also serve as inspiration for another book he would write, of course, Pet Cemetery. The large estate sitting at the bottom of the Rocky Mountains has a long history, as well as a long history of ghostly hauntings and inexplicable encounters. A ghost tour highlights a lot of the main specters that are said to roam the rooms and halls of the hotel. Stanley himself and his wife Flora apparently remain there, seen within the bar and playing the piano respectively. A few of the rooms are reportedly haunted with specific ghosts, 407 haunted by Lord Dunraven and 4 18 is haunted by children who can be heard laughing. Stephen King had stayed within room 217, outside of which a ghost of a young boy is said to appear. The author said he had seen the child himself, and that he was apparently calling out for his nanny. Number 5. Paveglia Island in Italy Known as Italy's most haunted island, and sometimes considered one of the most haunted places in the world, Paveglia Island is home to a long and twisted history. When the bubonic plague was sweeping populations, those who were sick were sent off to Paveglia Island as a sort of quarantine zone, and the same happened when the Black Death was going around. In the late 1800s, an asylum was built on the island. It was poorly constructed and wasn't really used as a place for healing or caring for the sick, but instead as a place of exile for them to be kept away from the rest of the community and to spend the rest of their days. In the 1930s, there was apparently a cruel doctor running the asylum, who was responsible for doing unethical experiments on the patients. Eventually, he fell from the bell tower, and while it's long gone, people say that they can still hear the chimes of the bell coming from the island. It is apparently crawling with the ghosts of the many souls who passed away there over the centuries. If you want to check it out for yourself though, you may find it quite difficult, as Italy prevents any tourists from visiting the island, and there is a lengthy application process to even be considered. Number 4. Tronquille Sanatorium in Kamloops, British Columbia Going up to the Great White North, Tronquille Sanatorium in British Columbia is known as one of the most haunted places in Canada. It was built in 1907 to treat people who were suffering from tuberculosis. It operated this way for many decades until it eventually closed its doors in 1958, as anti-tuberculosis medicine came around in 1940. It became a mental health institution before later becoming a detention facility for young offenders. As with Paveglia, the history of disease and death has led many to believe that the facility and grounds are incredibly haunted, and many people have reported large amounts of paranormal experiences. There are apparently various different ghosts you can spot there, like a mother crying for her child or the sound of children playing. And many people have shared photos from the facility where you can see ghost orbs or the outlines of figures in the dark. One of the main highlights, however, is the tunnels underneath, which were used for transportation and are apparently incredibly haunted. If you're interested, the farm that is now on the property offers tours and even escape rooms. Number 3. Hoyabashu Forest in Romania Known as one of the most haunted forests in the world, Hoyabashu is known as the Bermuda Triangle of Romania. The first thing that you'll notice when looking at pictures of the forest are the trees that appear crooked and bent, looking like they're contorting and reaching out for something. There are many legends surrounding the forest, most to do with ghostly and paranormal sightings. There's one story of a girl who disappeared into the forest, only to reappear five years later with no memory of what had happened or where she had been. She was wearing the same clothing and apparently hadn't aged at all. There's also another story about a sheep herder and his entire flock of 200 sheep which vanished into the woods, never to be seen again. Those who do enter the forest and make it back out find themselves with mysterious headaches, rashes and burns with no known explanation. And you know I can't make it through a list without mentioning aliens, so yes, there have been numerous reports of UFOs and extraterrestrials residing within the forest. Number 2. The Paris Catacombs 
Claustrophobic underground tunnels filled with 6 million bodies? Of course it's haunted. The Paris catacombs were created in the 18th century when the cemeteries were becoming overcrowded and they needed to find a quick solution. The 200 miles of tunnels lined with skeletons are home to plenty of ghost stories, legends, and petrifying encounters. One of the most famous stories comes from the 1990s when a group was exploring the dark tunnels and they found an abandoned camera. It had footage on it and when they played it, they were disturbed to find footage of a man who was clearly lost, running through the catacombs before he eventually drops the camera. Nobody knows what happened to the man or where he ended up. It's also said that if you're there after midnight, the walls will start to speak to you. Dismembered voices urging you to venture deeper and deeper into the tomb until you're no longer able to find your way out. Number 1. The Island of the Dolls in the mid 20th century, a man named Don Julian left his wife to live alone on an island on a lake in Mexico. Shortly after he had moved there, he discovered the body of a girl in the river, followed by a doll floating by. He took the doll and hung it from a tree in an attempt to appease the girl's spirit, but apparently it wasn't enough. For the next 50 years, he would collect dolls from the trash and canals and hang them from all the trees on the island. The dolls and toys are all in various states of disrepair some completely falling apart, making it one of the creepiest islands on earth. In 2001, Don Julian himself passed away, his body being discovered in the river. The dolls that still remain on this island to this day are supposedly haunted, there being many reports of their eyes moving to look at you, their arms moving as though to reach out to you, and apparently whispering to each other in the night. If the photos of the island aren't enough to scare you away, you can get onto the island for yourself for just around $2 a person. But once again, I'll leave the exploration up to you guys. Off this countdown, we have the Three Mile Island nuclear accident. This disaster is said to be the most serious nuclear accident in US history. It took place at the Three Mile Island plant in Pennsylvania. At 4 a.m. on March 28, 1979, a number of equipment failures took place. A pressure valve in one of the reactors failed to close, so the cooling water contaminated with radiation was draining into other buildings. And then the control operators didn't know how to deal with this, and soon the reactor heated to over 4,000 degrees, and radioactive steam seeped out of the building. Although no deaths or injuries were reported, it's believed that this leak caused a number of cancers and infant deaths in the area. Of course, the company downplayed the event. They were like, oh, nothing really happened here. No, 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 no radiation leaked out. But that's not the case. In the end, only pregnant women and small children were told to evacuate the area. But those that stayed suffered the consequences. Moving on to number nine, we have the Taylor Energy Spill. If you guys are liking this video so far, then smash that like button for me, the Christmas cowgirl. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of this, but chances are you haven't, because this oil spill was kept pretty hush-hush. Hardly anyone outside of Louisiana knew what went down. That's because they wanted to keep it all a secret in order to protect the company's reputation. Basically, back in 2004, an oil production platform sank in a mudslide after Hurricane Ivan struck. It said that 300 to 700 barrels of oil per day spewed from this site. This has been going on for more than 14 years. The spill was hidden for six of these years before an environmental group stumbled upon it and was like, What's going on here? Why is there oil seeping here? This is close to being one of the worst oil spills in US history. Like millions of barrels have leaked into the Gulf of Mexico, polluting the waters. To be more precise, they estimated that the spill leaked 140 million gallons of oil which is insane. In our eighth spot, we have Sellafield, UK. Back in the day during the Cold War, Sellafield was the site where weapon grade nuclear material was produced for the UK's nuclear weapon program. However, in 1957, one of the wind scale piles caught on fire and 11 tons of uranium was on fire for three days. As a result, radioactive material started spreading across the Lake District. It was deemed Britain's worst nuclear accident. On top of that, no one was evacuated and no one received iodine pills. Why? Well, workers were told to keep it all under wraps and to just keep working like nothing happened. Things continued on until they found out that like golf courses, milk, and chickens, among other things, were getting contaminated. That's when they were forced to tell the public about this. To this day, this place is considered one of the most radioactive places in the world. 
In our seventh spot, we have the Halifax Explosion. This is said to be the deadliest industrial disaster in Canada. It occurred on December 6, 1917, when a cargo ship filled with war explosives collided with another ship in the Halifax Harbour. The collision caused a massive explosion. 2,000 innocent people lost their lives. 9,000 were injured by the explosion and the flying debris and collapsing buildings. Others were killed by fires that scorched the area from the explosion. On top of that, a plume of black, thick smoke filled and polluted the air. Moving on to number six, we have the reactive zone of Paris. During the 1920s to 1930s, a number of radioactive tests were done in this area. The tests involved salts of radium-226. They were carried out safely until the French army decided to take over, and they ended up seriously contaminating the area, and they never disposed of the radioactive waste properly. In the 1990s, 61 barrels of cesium-137 and radium Radium 226 were found stored there. On top of that, there was 160,000 gallons of contaminated soil. Over the years, the area has been decontaminated, or at least they tried to. It never really worked. And in 2006, more contaminated areas were found. The whole time, the area was so radioactive, and the French army tried to keep it all a secret. But the people living nearby suffered. A high percentage of people living in the surrounding areas were found to have cancer. Although they denied that this site had any anything to do with it, it seems quite obvious that it does. To this day, this place is considered the most radioactive zone on the planet. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the contaminated hospital. Back in September of 1987, two individuals broke into an abandoned hospital in Brazil. They then were going around taking some things, hoping that they could resell it and get some money. Some things that they stole were parts from a teletherapy unit. Little did they know that what they took home was highly radioactive. That night, the two men fell ill and began throwing up. Over the course of the next couple of days, things got worse. In fact, one of the men had his hand swell and he had to get it partially amputated. But they didn't know what was making them sick. Plus, they didn't really want to tell people like, oh hey, we broke into a hospital and stole some stuff, so they kept it all a secret. And then one of the guys actually dismantled this radioactive object and was like, oh, what do we have in here? He ended up spreading cesium over a large area. As a result, four people died and 250 others were injured from exposure to the radioactive materials. A total of 112,000 people were exposed to the radioactive material. On top of that, the men's homes were demolished because they were so contaminated, and a number of other areas had to be decontaminated. To this day, this is said to be one of the world's worst nuclear disasters, and one of the world's worst radiological incidents. In our fourth spot, we have the the Exxon Valdez oil spill. On March 24th, 1989, one of the worst man-made disasters in US history took place. So on this day, an oil tanker owned by Exxon Shipping Company spilled 11 million gallons of crude oil into Prince William Sound. So just after midnight that day, the ship hit a reef. The collision caused the ship's hull to tear open and all that oil spilled into the water. Turns out that the captain of Exxon Valdez was drinking at the time of this event and also was not qualified to steer such a massive ship. This spill impacted 13,000 miles of coastline. It killed hundreds of thousands of birds, otters, seals, whales, you name it. Even to this day, this area is still heavily polluted. And to think it could have been easily avoided had they had a different captain of the ship. And most like the other disasters on this list, the company tried to keep it all hush hush, but in the end, the truth revealed itself. Coming in at number three, we have the North Korea nuclear accident. North Korea is a very secretive country. It's hard to know what really goes on there. What we do know though, is that North Korea is openly creating nukes and missiles and experimenting with these nuclear weapons. According to a number of articles, one of these tests in 2017 didn't go so well. 200 nuclear workers were killed at Kim Jong-un's testing facility. Basically, they're doing so much nuclear testing that the ground just can't take it anymore. I mean, in 2018, a mountain collapsed after more nuclear testing. 
But anyways, in this case, an unfinished tunnel collapsed, killing 100 workers. Then 100 more workers died after trying to rescue the first group. Now, this disaster is nowhere near as bad as Chernobyl, but I put this on this list because experts are scared and have predicted that in the future, the nuclear testing facility will most likely crumble. And when it does, a radioactive leak will occur, and it's said to be even worse than Chernobyl. So they're on the path to a very bad nuclear explosion or leak. In our second spot, we have the Bhopal disaster, also referred to as the Bhopal gas tragedy. This was a gas leak that occurred on the night of December 2nd to the morning of December 3rd in 1984. It occurred at the Union Carbide India Limited pesticide plant in Bhopal, India. Apparently, the pipes were lacking routine maintenance and that caused a backflow of water into a tank containing methyl isocyanate gas. That's what caused this gas leak. This is said to be one of the world's worst industrial disasters. Over 500,000 people were exposed to this gas. It seeped into the towns surrounding the plant. It said that the death toll was 2,259, but later it was revealed to be much higher with 3,787 deaths. Some even believe it was up to 8,000 deaths but the government is concealing the true number of deaths from this tragedy. On top of that, over 500,000 people were left injured, including nearly 4,000 permanent injuries. And in our number one spot today, we have the Kishchim disaster. On September 29th, 1957, an explosion occurred at a plutonium production site for nuclear weapons and nuclear fuel reprocessing plant in Russia. It was built during the late 1940s as part of a Soviet program to develop nuclear weapons. It was a secret facility that people did not know about. Well, on that day, the cooling system containing radioactive waste failed and no one even noticed. The waste started to heat up and eventually exploded at 350 degrees Celsius. 20 million curries of radioactive material flung into the sky. It got picked up by the wind and spread over an area of 20,000 square kilometers. 270,000 people were living in the affected areas. And what's worse is that the Soviet government refused to let people know what happened. No one evacuated and hundreds of people died from the radioactivity of the area. Hundreds of others suffered from radiation sickness. It wasn't until 1989 that the Soviet government acknowledged what happened. At least in Chernobyl, people were told what went down and then were forced to evacuate. Let's list in our number 10 spot, we have the Fairmont Banff Spring Hotel. This Canadian hotel is absolutely legendary, but despite the spooky tales, tourism remains as high as ever. This hotel was built in 1888 in order to encourage tourists and to sell train tickets, and while it certainly did just that, this chateau-style hotel was only the icing on the cake to a trip to the gorgeous Rocky Mountains and all that waits in the Banff National Park. Through the years though, several guests have had some haunting stories to tell which included reports of ghost sightings. These ghosts are thought to reside in the hotel and they include a bride who allegedly fell down the stone staircase during her wedding which led to her untimely departure, or the legend of Sam the Bellman. This legend has it that Sam worked at the hotel until 1975 and before leaving he claimed that he would come back to haunt the hotel. It is said that his spirit can be seen in the hotel helping people with their bags. In our number 9 spot today, we have Zunantinich. This location sits deep in the jungles of Belize, located less than a mile from the border of Guatemala. It has an unbelievably rich history as it is an ancient Maya ruin that has been abandoned for the last thousand years. In 1890, this site had its modern discovery and since then it has been an important site for archaeology, an amazing tourist attraction, but also it is said to be a hot spot for the paranormal. It is said that the site is haunted by a female ghost. She has black hair and glowing red eyes. Referred to as the Stone Lady, it is said that she was first spotted by one of the first research teams in the area in 1893, and since then she has been frequently seen by the tallest building complex called El Castillo. No one exactly knows the story behind the Stone Lady considering the history of this site, but many believe she may have been a part of a ritual sacrifice, which was a tradition and spiritual 
ritual practice done by the ancient Maya civilization. In our number 8 spot today we have Berg Elts. This German castle dates back to 1157 so it's no surprise that there are many myths and legends surrounding it. The most common tale is that of a young countess named Agnes. Agnes was betrothed or promised to another noble but after meeting him she called off their future wedding. Apparently this guy was the worst and also even if he wasn't no one could really blame her for calling off a wedding she didn't want to have. But of course things quickly went awry. This noble guy was mad that she had rejected him so the scorned lover laid siege to the castle. Agnes fought to defend her home but she passed away during the battle. That is the story behind why her spirit is said to haunt the Berg Elts castle. Many say the strongest presence is felt in her former bedroom. It is said that her spirit is quite mournful and apparently her battle armor and axe remain on display as well. In our number 7 spot today we have the Eden Brown Estate. This estate is located in Nevis which is the smaller of the two islands that comprise the nation of St. Kitts and Nevis in the Caribbean. It is said that despite having just as much to offer, Nevis is often overshadowed by St. Kitts. That is, until people hear of this ghostly haunting. Eden Brown Estate is a former plantation that now lies in ruin. The estate was once owned by a businessman who was going to give the property to his daughter as a wedding present. Legend goes that on the wedding day there was a very mysterious duel between the groom and his best man that ended up leaving both of the men dead. Because of this tragic happening on what should have been her wedding day, the businessman's daughter remained unmarried and alone for the rest of her life, which meant that when she passed, there was no one to leave the estate to. Now visitors of the estate report seeing the spirit of a reclusive woman as she roams about the grounds. Aside from this story, who knows what other kind of horrors and absolute tragedies that this place has seen. In our number 6 spot today we have Bangar Fort. Bangar Fort is located in India just 100 miles southwest of Delhi. This place is pretty much completely abandoned as it is said to have had a curse placed on it. Apparently many many years ago a sorcerer tried to woo a local princess and when she rejected him he got so upset that he decided that cursing this town was his only course of action. I just have to mention that none of these are a normal reaction to being rejected and calling it an overreaction would honestly be an understatement. This fort now is closed to visitors after sundown because of all the spooky happenings that go on here. This fort is extremely beautiful so it's no wonder the paranormal doesn't keep people out. People have reported having extremely strong feelings of an otherworldly presence and even some have reported hearing voices that are seemingly coming from nowhere. In our number 5 spot today we have the Whaley House. The Whaley House is located in San Diego and it was built in 1857. The site that this family house was built on was actually the location of San Diego's first public gallows, so as you can imagine that's a pretty good backstory for a haunted site. Right after moving in, Thomas Whaley reported that he could hear the footsteps of Yankee Jim Robinson who had been hanged at the gallows just four short years before the house was built. After moving in, the Whaley family began to experience a bunch of family tragedies, many of which actually happened inside of the house. The Whaley house is now a museum and apparently the family members continue to haunt the site. These paranormal occurrences are apparently often accompanied by the smells of cigar smoke and heavy perfumes. In our number 4 spot today we have Obvodny Canal. Obvodny Canal is located in St. Petersburg, Russia and this whole thing just really creeps me out. This man made canal was built in the late 18th century and ever since then there has been extremely strange occurrences at this location. Construction workers would complain of headaches, they would also sometimes even have random outbursts of violent behavior that was uncomfortable characteristic of them, but the craziest, most unsettling part is what has given this location full cursed status. Many of these people have attempted to take their own lives. Sadly, most of the attempts were successful, but the few people who have been saved have explained that they have no idea why they did it. They say that they didn't really have intentions beforehand, and some have even said that they felt some sort of invisible force pulling them into the water. Apparently there are some sinister souls that live beneath the surface of the water, and there have even been reports of seeing a lady in white in the water before she suddenly disappears. Long story short, remind me to just never 
ever go here. In our number three spot today, we have the Eastern State Penitentiary. The Eastern State Penitentiary is located in Philadelphia, and of course it used to be a prison, but it is now an abandoned and extremely haunted house. This prison used to house some pretty big profile prisoners such as Al Capone and Willie Sutton, but it was different from the American prisons we are used to now. This is because this prison was entirely separate incarceration. The inmates would live, sleep, eat, and everything else alone. When they were removed from their cells, they would have hoods placed over their heads as well. Considering all we now know about how detrimental isolation is, this of course must have taken an immense toll on the prisoners. Beside this, there were also some pretty gruesome and horrible punishments in this prison, such as having prisoners' tongues chained to their wrists. I'm honestly not even sure how you would do that, but apparently it was a thing. This prison now sees thousands of voluntary visitors every year, and there have been plenty of reports of some creepy paranormal happenings. These reports include seeing shadowy figures, hearing creepy laughter that doesn't belong to anyone living, and hearing footsteps throughout the prison. I feel like considering all that went on when this prison was active, it truly does make sense that this building would be a haunted one. In our number two spot today, we have Raynham Hall. Raynham Hall is located in England and was built around 1620, and it is a large building on 7,000 acres, which is obviously quite impressive. The tale that follows this haunted building is that of Lady Dorothy Dolly Townsend and her husband Viscount Turnip Townsend. I can't believe a couple with the nicknames Dolly and Turnip have an evil history, but unfortunately, they do. The story goes that Turnip kept Dolly locked up in the house, which is obviously just terrible and very cruel. After her passing, it's no wonder she decided to stick around and haunt the house. Apparently, there was a photo taken of her ghost in 1930, and it is said that no one has ever been able to prove it was a fake. So, all you photo experts out there, take a look and let me know what you think. A lot of the places on this list now serve as haunted houses, but apparently this one is still lived in by the Raynham family. Hence the name. In our number one spot today, we have Forsyth Park. One thing I didn't know is that apparently the entire city of Savannah, Georgia is a pretty haunted place due to the creepy tunnels that are located underneath the city. But one of the most notable, highly haunted places within the city is Forsyth Park. Apparently there used to be a hospital across the street and there would be autopsies performed in the tunnels below the park. I personally feel like autopsies are already creepy enough, so I'm not sure if conducting them in an underground tunnel was exceptionally necessary, but hey, I can't change the past. Because of this scary practice, the park has seen a lot of paranormal activity since these days, and it usually is the sort of place where one second you'll see a strange figure, but as soon as you blink or look away, it disappears just as quickly as it suddenly appeared. Mm -hmm. 